techniques in Spark AR today to get you introduced to the software and to also get you up and running to make your first Instagram filter. I'll be using Spark AR, which you can download for free at sparkar.facebook.com. And I'll also be using Sculpt GL, which you can use online for free here. So before we begin, make sure you have downloaded Spark AR and that you've logged in with the Facebook account that's connected to your Instagram. So the first technique that we're going to learn is facial deformation using Sculpt GL to re-sculpt our faces. If you're not too sure what facial deformation is, here are a few examples. Scan the QR codes to try the filters on as well. Firstly, we need to download the face reference assets, which you can download for free at Spark AR. So if you Google face reference assets and then click on the first link and then click here to download the face reference assets. The face reference assets are a collection of textures and 3D meshes, which you can create face effects with. So once you've downloaded the link, open the zip file and save the contents to a folder. You could call it something like Spark AR. So now if you head to Sculpt GL, this is the link here, but you can also find the link in the description of this video below. First things first, we need to clear the scene. So if you go to Scene and then click Clear Scene. Now click Files and then Add. Navigate to where you saved your Spark AR folder, find Face Assets, then click Mesh. Select FaceMesh.obj instead of FaceMesh.fbx. It's really important you choose FaceMesh.obj. If you choose the other one, it's not going to show up in the scene in Sculpt GL. You should now see a face mesh in the scene. This is a 3D object which can be mapped to the face tracker in Spark AR. In Sculpt GL, we can use different tools to change the physical appearance of a face by sculpting this face mesh. The basic tools we recommend to start using are in the toolbar in the bottom right hand corner. If you click on the drop down menu, you'll see a lot of different options. These are your sculpting effects which you can use like a brush. They're fairly self-explanatory, so inflate makes the object that you're sculpting larger, twist manipulates the mesh in a circular motion, and smooth makes the mesh smoother and flatter. So you can also adjust the radius of the effect, which is basically just the brush size. This option is right below the tool tab in the bottom right hand corner. The last option that you have is to toggle symmetry on and off, which basically allows you to sculpt the face either symmetrically or either side separately. So this stage in the process can actually take quite a lot of experimentation because what you can see in the scene here can actually look very different when it's actually mapped to a face in Spark AR. So when you finish sculpting your face mesh, click save and then .obj. Make sure you select .obj because if you select one of the other options, those file types won't work in Spark AR. Save the file inside your Spark AR folder and save it something like deformation underscore zero one. Now let's get to the fun part. We're gonna start working in Spark AR. So open up the software and you should see a window which looks something like this. Click here and then select blank project to create a new project. So here we have the scene tab, the assets tab, the properties tab and the simulator which is where you'll be able to see your effect in progress. In the assets tab click add asset and import from computer. Navigate to your Spark AR folder and select deformation underscore zero one. You should now see this face mesh inside the assets tab. In the scene tab, select add object and add face tracker. Right click on the face tracker and click add face mesh. Click on the face mesh and in the properties panel, click the plus sign next to deformation and select deformation underscore zero one. There we go, it's that easy to deform your face. As you can see, it looks quite different to how it did in Sculpt GL. So if you're not satisfied with your first deformation, head back to Sculpt GL and you can either tweak the version you're working with or start the process again. 
So the second technique I'm going to show you is how to add an image texture onto your face. I'm going to be using this image which you can also use as well. You can find it in the download pack available in the link in the description below. Or you can find any image that you like online or even edit your own in any image editing software. So right click the face tracker and click add face mesh. Select the new face mesh and rename it face mesh underscore image. In the properties panel click the plus sign next to material and select create new material. In the assets panel rename this material face underscore image. In the properties panel I'm going to change the shader type to face paint and then I'm going to click the plus sign next to texture and navigate to this image. You can use this image or any image of your own choice. I'm going to change the opacity to 18% the background influence to 100% and the brightness to 38%. Feel free to adjust the shader type and adjust the settings in the properties panel. This looks great except for the fact that I have this very obvious line around my face, but I'm going to show you how you can get rid of this using one of the textures you already downloaded in the face reference assets. Head to add asset and select import from computer. Navigate to your Spark AR project folder and then select face assets textures and face mesh mask. Open up the patch editor by selecting view and then show or hide patch editor. Click add patch and then search for multiply. Select your material face underscore image and then click on the little arrow next to texture. You should see a face image node next to the multiply node. We're going to multiply our image with the face mesh mask and feed them into the texture. Drag and drop your image and the face mesh mask into the patch editor like so. Plug the RGBA values into the multiply arrows on the left hand side. Now plug the multiply arrow on the right hand side into the face image node. And there we go, we have a blended edge and no more horrible line. The third technique I'm gonna show you is how to create a shiny or glossy face. You can use this in combination with the previous technique with the image texture on your face, or you can use it without, it's up to you. To create the glossy face, we're gonna right click the face tracker in the scene tab and select add face mesh. In the properties panel, untick eyes and mouth. Click the plus sign next to materials and select create new material. In the assets panel, rename this material shiny face. In the properties panel, change the shader type to physically based. This shader type allows us to create a nice and realistic looking shine. We're gonna be using the same asset that we used before to ensure that we have a nice and blended edge. Click choose file next to texture and select face mesh mask. For now, adjust the metallic value to 100% and in a minute we can play around with these different values. Tick the box next to environment and in the drop down next to texture, select search AR library. I'm gonna choose forest environment, but feel free to choose whichever one you like. This looks a bit intense, so I'm gonna reduce the opacity. Um, feel free to play around with the blend modes and adjust the metallic and the roughness values until you find a balance that works for you. The fourth technique I'm gonna show you is how to adjust the pitch in the sound of your effects. We're gonna use the pitch shifter patch to make the pitch of an audio source deeper or higher. The audio source we're going to be using is the microphone. In the scene tab, drag and drop the microphone into the patch editor. Click add patch and search for pitch shifter. Then in the scene tab, click add asset and insert speaker. In the properties panel, click the little tick next to audio and a speaker node should appear in the patch editor. Connect the audio output from microphone into the audio input from the pitch shifter node. Now connect the audio output from the pitch shifter into the speaker input. 
To adjust the pitch, we can change the value of semi, which refers to semitones, between minus 12 and 12. Minus 12 is very deep and 12 is very high. You can listen to the effect of the pitch shifter by testing the effect. Click the test on device icon, center app and center Instagram. Then you can record a video and listen back to hear the pitch shift. This is for the semitone adjustment of minus five. This is for the semitone adjustment of five. Now I'm gonna explain how you can export your effect and upload it to Instagram. In order to upload your effect, you'll need an icon and a demo video. To record a demo video, click test on device, send to app and send to Instagram. In a few moments, you'll receive a notification on Instagram to try on your effect. Tap the notification and tap to continue. You can record a demo video by tapping and holding the icon. Save the video to your camera roll and then send this back to your computer. We'll be needing this in a minute. Back in Spark AR, click export and upload. Once your effect meets all the platform requirements, select publish new effect and select upload. Once your effect has finished uploading, Spark AR Hub should automatically load in your browser. Here you can select the platform you'd like to publish it on. So I'm gonna go with Instagram and then you can name it whatever you like. You can select up to four different categories and then write a number of different keywords which best describe your effect. Make sure that the correct owner and Instagram account are selected. Then you can upload the demo video that you just recorded. Choose the publication date as you like and write some simple instructions to describe your effect for the reviewer. That's it, now you can hit submit.